fans, are you ready to brave the wild? With me, your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Brave the Wild is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and now we're available on Google Play Music. So Google Play Music is now a part of things with Brave the Wild, Tim Rules Explosion, Purple Mafia, of course, the other two podcasts I do. Well, it's nice to be back. Nice to be back on board talking hockey today. Got some snow coming down outside on a Thursday morning. And, well, Minnesota Wild had a very entertaining game against Tampa Bay, got the win. But since then, things have not been so great, getting crushed by Carolina. And then a game against Anaheim where, I don't know, if we were duck hunting, I don't think we brought any bullets or something, at least not until much later in the game. One and two week. Sure, it could be worse, but it sure as hell could be a lot better. That Anaheim game was, ugh, I mean, like, non-existent. I can't believe we got a point out of it, frankly. That's how weak it was. But, yeah, some interesting stats in that one. And, of course, just the injuries keep piling up. It's just, it's a sad situation. Koivu continuing to be out. That's unfortunate. Lower body injury, as they like to call it. Lower body could be the knee, the ankle, one of the two getting aggravated a week ago. Spurgeon with the broken bone in his hand, which really sucks because that's starting to really pop up. <laughs> the Carolina game has certainly showed my goodness, huh? Dumba and Studer, oof, they did not have a good game there, and a lot of people didn't. Oh, man, that was a rotten, rotten game. Carolina looks great. We look awful, at least in that game. Tampa, Tampa Bay game was pretty fun, though. We'll start off with that one. Though, Stalock, yeah, I mean, you're starting to see why he's a backup goalie. I mean, God bless him. I love Alex Stalock. I want all the success in the world. But it's like you're seeing why he's a backup. And again, like what I'm saying with Alex Daylock starting in goalie or platooning with the Kapokakin and something like that, that's because, yeah, I mean, you're, you know, you're kind of sort of semi-rebuilding on the fly, I guess you could call it, where you have veterans you can't get rid of and they're still good. Suter and Parisi for the most part. Parisi, I think, has been a lot better than Suter the last few weeks. I would venture to say that. I don't think a whole lot of you would disagree. But uh, Jiminy Christmas, I don't know. I mean, I the gold. <laughs> Goaltending by Stalock on this one, not the best, though he was sharp at the end when it mattered, thankfully. Carson Soucy, what a nice game. He had a beautiful shot, kind of did a little fake and then release, and that one got through. Was not deflected by anybody else. His third goal of the season, <clears throat> that was midway in the game there. And he also got an assist late to add to his numbers on Victor Rask's goal, putting the puck on net, and Victor Rask able to finish. That was pretty cool. Zuccarello. Parisi, Donato, what a nice week for those guys. Zuccarello just piling up the points. Got to feel good for him. Didn't look good, though. Very first shot on goal. You just kind of knew that uh, Alex Stalock wouldn't be uh, very sharp in this game. You could just sense it. Sarnak getting a second goal of the season. Basically, just, again, you know, you're going towards the net. You're shooting the puck, maybe looking for a juicy rebound. Or, again, just getting something on net, getting something going, which Wild refused to do against Anaheim. They just got smothered in that game. Oh, that one's a real... God, that was bad. Ugh, it was bad. But no, first shot on net in the whole game. Eric Sternak scores right away, just less than two minutes into the game. And then Yule Eric Sternak off a gorgeous play by uh, Jordan Greenway. Suter was able to get in a, the second assist on the play. But Jordan Greenway setting things up from behind the net. That was awesome. Tying things up about nine minutes later, or eight minutes later or so. And it was a very entertaining few minutes here. Again, the, goal, the Wild scored three goals. In less than two minutes, this was a franchise record here. That was fun. I mean, it was just boom, boom, boom. And enjoyed every second of it. I loved this game so much. It was so much fun. It just sucked how Staylock again started to get beat pretty badly. Now, not every goal was, was that bad. It just was frustrating. And, of course, the defense in front sometimes, the turnovers, come back to bite you. And, boy, did things come back to bite the Wild in the Carolina game. I mean, it was just turnover after turnover. Guys just playing better, you know, out-muscling, whatever it was. It was embarrassing. Dumba did not have a good week again. Still no points for Matt Dumba. In, I, I, it feels like eternity since Matt Dumba has even scored a point. I can't even... I, I don't have an answer for the guy right now. He doesn't look like the same player. Um... I might be sounding like I'm repeating myself and, of course, repeating after other, what other people are saying on other shows out there. I, he, I don't know what's going on other than, again, it's just, is it that, that torso injury? The pectoral injury is still kind of... I had a, I, I had a little fear that maybe the range in motion would, would be a little different. Maybe the, you know, the release would have the full strength that it had before. They look strong, but nothing's happening. There's just nothing's happening, and I, I don't know what to say. Alex Stalock, again, the past couple of weeks here, the goals against average has gone 
It's rising like a bull market. Yeah, I mean, it's it's rising real high. Two, 291 now on the season. Oh, boy, his past few games here have been pretty harsh, I'd have to say. When you want to look at his splits and everything, like, say, you know, like the month, month by month, this and that, thus far, on the December, he's been pretty bad, I'd have to say. Again, back in October, 2.49, and November, he even got to three because at the end of the month, he started giving up some goals. And, of course, Staylock, you know, he's he's not the perfect goalie. He's got a lot of skill. He's good with the puck. He's a wonderful teammate. He's just a great all-around person and everything. But again, you know, I mean, he, he he has games like he did. He has games like he did this past week. Goals against average so far in December, 3.6. Yikes, 89% save percentage. Starting to look like the Florida goalies. Or, God bless him, Devin Dubnik earlier in the season. And I, I know, that's that's not who Devin Dubnik is. I get it. Uh, it's amazing, though. How Stalag actually was 4-0 and in November. That's pretty impressive, but of course, some overtime losses. Let's just keep moving on. I apologize. Fun, entertaining game with Tampa, though. That three-goal span in two minutes was just beautiful. Less than two minutes. Very, very exciting stuff. Again, that Susie fake, that just showed some skill. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And then uh, Zucker from Stahl. What an awesome play. Zuccarillo picked up a couple points in this game, and that was some fun stuff. Back and forth, back and forth, especially when you thought we might lose the game at certain times. But the Wild never really relinquished the lead after getting it back, we'll say. That was the good part. Again, you go up 3-1. to one. Ah, Just stay locked. The goals allowed here were not so good. I mean, Hedman, it just kind of was what it was. It was a power play. But the Sergachev Sir- 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 was not that great. Not, exciting, not excited about that goal at all. Victor Hedman, it was a power play goal. He's one of the best defensemen on the planet. You know, he's up there at the top, like the top. So I can't really complain a whole lot. Again, the only reason why his numbers aren't sky high is because he missed an extended period of time earlier. Not too much time, but a couple weeks there for Victor Hedman. And he absolutely showing his skill here. Oh, you wish Dumba was up there with with those guys. You wish. He he should be somewhere. Somewhere. Maybe a tier below Hedman. But he should be somewhere up there. And it's just not happening right now. Uh, Victor Rask getting his third goal of the season. And he, he's the kind of guy, I mean, Victor Rask, again, I, I'm saying this every week lately. I sound like a broken record. At least as a fourth line center, y- you don't really want him out of the lineup. You don't really want him out of the lineup. He's good enough. He's good enough to be in the lineup. He's playing hard. He's getting opportunities. And he was able to finish on Fiala's shot. That was a nice play. That was a very nice play, getting the rebound and making a little move there, a little ditzy doodle, a little bit. Nothing too special, but. Making the play happen. Third goal of the season. The Kilgorn, the Kilhorn, Killorn. I keep wanting to call him Kilgorn, Killhorn. <laughs> it's Killorn. I apologize for that one. I apologize for that one. That was, oh, that was bad. That was a bad goal given up. And again, you could just, you could just chalk it up. I mean, even the couple goals that Kakinen gave up were kind of like, uh, the second one, he might have been interfered with. It was hard to say. It didn't look like it. Maybe it just kind of screened. He couldn't really see the puck, this and that. Against Anaheim, but the first one was not so good. We'll just say we'll leave that alone. But uh, other than that, he's, he was awesome. He's definitely the better goalie between these two. God forbid. Even though it's early, he looks like the better goalie. He has something else that uh, tacked in. He's got a chance to be something. But uh, Killorn, this was not a good one at all. This one's on not just Staylock, but uh, Dumba here as well. Not a good play, generally speaking. This was an embarrassing goal, 4-4. Four to four. But then just seconds, just milliseconds later, right off the face-off, Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Jonas Brodeen feeding it. Oh, that was awesome. Feeding it up to Zucker, to Zuccarello. Like, it was literally like seconds. Uh, it was a spectacular play. Eight seconds after the Killorn goal. The Wild take the lead right back. You could see the excitement on Zucker's face. That was an awesome play. Zuccarello, just what a great week. Again, and the, the plays he set up for others during the course of this week and the course of the last couple of weeks. Zuccarello is starting to really look like a guy that's worth $6 million, uh, believe it or not. Well, <laughs> as expensive as it is, especially with the the most expensive part of that contract is the no move clause, because I'm sure if say we're looking to rebuild, other teams other teams like Tampa Bay might want to pick up a Zuccarello, something like that. You could get a draft pick or a prospect along the way, but I don't know. Nice to have him on the team. No offense whatsoever to Zuccarello. Everybody loves the guy. Great personality, <clears throat> brings everybody up, and he makes some wonderful plays. Whether it's scoring goals or making even better plays by setting players up, he's just a he's a he's an he's an awesome player. He he really is. Loved him with New York for a long time, and he was valuable for Dallas in their playoff run that ended in overtime loss to the uh, St. Louis Blues 
in the seventh game of the second round. Um, but love what Zuccarello brings. Wild ended up winning the game. Stalock making the saves that he needed to down the stretch, thankfully, after giving up four bleeping goals that weren't all 100% his fault, but generally speaking, not so great. Not not a great game by Stalock, particularly early on, putting the Wild in that early deficit there. But luckily, the Wild were... Uh, they, they were ready to play in this game. You could feel the energy, the, the confidence, and it just went up in smoke after this game. And that's the unfortunate part about all this. Uh, as fun and as exciting as this game was, uh, Debbie Downer's back. Debbie Downer's coming. Again, that was the 5th of December. 5-4 to four win. Not a not an overtime loss. Regulation, or not an overtime win. A regulation win. And then we get regulation loss against Carolina. The definition of a regulation loss. Oof, December the 7th. Saturday evening, early evening, 6 o'clock. Fun, fun feeling. We get to watch the Wild, but it's like, hey, we've always struggled against Carolina. It's always been a weird matchup. And whenever Carolina's good, they just destroy us. They're literally hurricanes. They're literally hurricanes. I mean, it's crazy. It's unbelievable how tough this team can be. Whenever they're good, they kill us. And whenever they're not so good, it's a frustrating loss. Like, we, like kind of like the Anaheim game. That's just kind of Minnesota versus Carolina. He just put it in a nutshell, and it's just a load of you-know-what. It's the same old story, and this was a bad game from the get-go. You could just feel it. Uh, not right out of the get-go, I should say. Great play by Donato early on. This was kind of fun. Uh, even better play by Marcus Foligno, though. What a great play. Getting the turnover and then nice feed. Donato ultimately finishing for his fourth goal of the season. Great play by Marcus Foligno, though. Getting physical. And moving the puck to Donato as he was heading towards the net for his fourth goal of the season. Donato, again, you think only four goals, but of course, he's been on a run of late. And after this, Stalock was just, he struggled, but it wasn't just him, obviously. Dumba and Suter had an awful game. Guys out of position, this and that. Uh, Svechnikov put the Carolina Panthers, Carolina Hurricanes, excuse me, I'm just screwing around, up with the power play after Walmart had tied it up. About seven minutes after uh, uh, Donato's fourth goal of the season, Sebastian Aho would wind up getting a hat trick in this game. Oh boy, there was a, a, a turnover by uh, Suter along the way that helped lead to a goal. That I can't really blame Stalock there. You wanted him to get the save, yes. That's the thing. Sometimes he makes he he doesn't overachieve to get the save. It just doesn't happen. Like the skill's not there. Sometimes, sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. And Heck, we could say that about Dubnik about a million times the last two years or so, where three years ago, four years ago, Dubnik would make some saves that would su- surprise a lot of people. But the analytics do show that Dubnik is not the reason why his goals against average was so good the last couple of years. It was the defenseman in front of him. And in this game, Stalock did not get a whole lot of help. Again, he did not overachieve whatsoever in this game. I did not think Stalock had a good game, but I think Dumba and Suter had a worse game. I thought they were hideous. Absolutely hideous in this game. I, I was extremely frustrated. With what I saw, Eric Stahl fed Zuccarillo for only his, for only the second goal of the game for Minnesota. Much later, Wild would end up at least getting within one point, though, or one goal, pardon me, at this time. Sebastian Aho, though, on the power play, a couple goals. Aho, Aho, I don't know. <laughs> a great player for Carolina with his 15th goal and 16th goal, 14, 15, 16. He ended up getting the hat trick. Not a natural hat trick, of course, because it was interrupted by Zuccarillo's goal and then Joel Edmondson's Edmondson's goal as well. That was a frustration there. Just get again putting the puck on net. You got to get a stop somewhere. It is what it is. You know, Stalock getting screened. The defense in front of him wasn't good. One thing after another was kind of the case. And then an empty netter for the hat trick for Aho. And then the hats came down with about a minute and a half remaining in the game. Uh, not a fun game at all. Not a fun game. Uh, Alex Stalock did face 39 shots. So, again, I mean, credit to him a little bit. It's not like he was terrible, and not all six goals, of course, counted towards him. Five goals, but not a good game at all, uh, generally speaking. He wasn't good. The players in front of him weren't good. The turnover by Suter didn't help. Dumba being out of position multiple times in this game didn't help. Dumba getting beat, you know, it, it, during a power play where he he, he bit. He, he went out for the one-timer and left a hole open right next to the net. But just not good, not good. That's just where the frustration comes in. An overall rotten game for the Wild defense, generally speaking. The forwards didn't do a whole lot of help either, I'd have to say. 
and Peter Mrazek, one of the funniest uh, YouTube videos this year, uh, NHL highlight videos, whatever you want to say, with uh, Joe, Joe Thornton, Jumbo Joe for the San Jose Sharks, of course, Moses, you want to call him, you want to call him Moses, you want to call him Methuselah, whatever you want to call him, for the uh, San Jose Sharks with a gigantic beard, obviously, we've, he's had it for, for a while now, and uh, boy, he is... <laughs> <laughs> He's a son of a gun. Kind of a thing going on with the Sharks, too. I guess I guess Sharks have big beards, I guess. I guess. And they fired their coach this week, too. And no, it's not related to any personal stuff. Like, yeah, you know, like what's been going on with uh, oh boy, the past couple of the Calgary coach and such. Uh, years ago, the yeah, Vancouver coach, Dallas Crawford. Yeah, that guy. Oof, Carl Crawford. Where, yeah, they berate players and call them this and call them that. Was it a racial slur? Is it this, that, insensitive, this, insensitive, that? I hate that word, insensitive. I think it's thrown around way too much. Way, way too much. But still, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, this day and age, you sneeze near somebody, you might get, you might offend them. That's just how it is. And I understand some stuff really is offensive. Some stuff is unnecessary. The Calgary coach... Probably, yeah, no, <laughs> not a good idea what he did. That's going too far. As long as it's true, it's, it's, it's going too far, obviously. You don't do that, and it is what it is. I mean, it's a sad situation. That, again, that's not why the Sharks coach is fired, of course. Um, but, I don't know, Peter Mrazek, I, that, I was just talking about Peter Mrazek versus Joe Thornton, wasn't I? That was a funny play, though, where Mrazek, Thornton just kind of jabbed at the puck as the whistle was blown, and Mrazek, took offense to it, right? And he basically swung his goalie stick right at Thornton. Thornton just stood there waiting like, okay, what are you going to do? You know, and <laughs> as it got closer, Thornton then punches him in the throat. Beautiful play. And the, he went down like in, in a heap. Thornton just looked at him like, okay, really? That That's it? And the crowd booed the hell out of him in the same building of uh, North Carolina there. <sighs> Funny, entertaining PNC Arena, of course, where they actually sell tickets now. Where in the past they didn't. Eighteen thousand six eighty. Awesome. Good. Good for. Good for Carolina. Good for. Good for Rally there. Good for those guys. Good for them. You know what? Good for Carolina, North Carolina, as they struggled so long. You thought maybe before you know it, they're going to move to Quebec City. They're going to move to Seattle. They're going to move to Portland, Oregon. Who knows? <sighs> Who knows? But it, it ain't happening now. Uh, they're. A great organization now, organization as they say in the NHL. Great, uh, great run for them again. Great uh, general managing by Ron Francis and Waddell. Waddell did a good job after Francis, but Francis really put this team together. Waddell kept it together, kind of got things rolling. Sad how Francis left, but uh, Francis left right after, right before they got good, basically, but assembled most of the players and now is the uh, general manager of the Seattle something or others. The Seattle wave Waverns, the Seattle Griffins, the Seattle... I, I hope it's something cool. Of course, they're going to be green somehow, right? They're probably going to be green, most likely. So the uh, Seahawks have their green on them. They have their emerald uniforms along with their blue. They're trying to look like the Timberwolves, I guess. And uh, I don't know. Who cares? Screw Seattle, right? <laughs> Screw Seattle for now. But no, good for them. They should be a successful hockey market been a long time. It's been a long time. It's crazy to think Seattle had a team way, way, way before us, actually. Uh, that's really weird, actually. Of course, we had about a billion like minor league teams and all that, too, way back in the day. To think, 1967. That's kind of weird. 67? And then the, the Metropolitans of Seattle were around, like, in the 20s? Wrap your head around that. That's weird. That's weird. I, I'm... Okay, you know, I guess, I guess Seattle should have had hockey before the Wild, or before the Wild, before Minneapolis, Minnesota, or St. Paul, or Bloomington, whatever it is. Okay, yeah, let's go to the Anaheim game. <laughs> yeah, wow, what a, what a great effort. Yeah, but great effort by Hakkinen, yes. The first goal given up, very early by Ricard Raquel, not the best thing you ever saw. And again, we've heard this a million times, I'll say it again, as he was compared to Ricard Raquel, uh, Jewel Erickson Eck was compared to him as a possible, uh, you know, maybe a ceiling for uh, Jewel Erickson Eck, which would be a good thing. Ricard Raquel, defensive player who can score. Very valuable piece for the Anaheim Ducks. Actually, one of their best players at this moment. Ryan Getzlaff, the Koivu of the Ducks, getting all these milestones just like Koivu, and he was recognized very nicely on this night against the Anaheim Ducks. You got to see Marion Gabrick. Oh, that, that's emotional. I miss that guy. 
Oh, you got tired of the groin injury after groin injury after this injury after that injury after a contract dispute after holdout. Oh my God. But when he was actually on the ice and on top of his game, there's never been a wild player like Miriam Gabrick. Never, ever, ever. And those of you that were, you know, I can't believe I'm saying this, but those of you that are old enough to remember Miriam Gabrick, I can't believe I'm saying that. That's weird. I feel like it was yesterday, cause it's, but heck, I was 20-ish. Now I'm 40. So... Time flies. I loved Marion Gabrick so much. I hated the contract disputes. I hated the freaking injury after injury after injury. I'm sure Jacques Lemaire and Doug Risebrow did too. That was one of the only good things Doug Risebrow did, <laughs> other than, again, assembling a, a bunch of free agents that overachieved greatly and helped us get to the West Finals. That's where Risebrow was good, but right after that, it was like, you know, draft after draft after draft, seven, eight players. Maybe one of them makes the NHL. Maybe one. And Half the time, that one guy was like Ryan Jones or something. You know, like he's barely good enough. Barely. Like, you know, like what Ryan Hartman kind of is. I mean, I love Ryan Hartman, so I shouldn't say that. But, ugh. And he was the, yeah, there's an interesting number with Ryan Hartman coming up here. Not him as a player, but as the team involving Ryan Hartman coming up here in a second. This is one of the most lifeless things. I mean, what a way, what a way to to to, to, to give a tribute to, to one of the, Best players in franchise history, Miko Koivu, of course, who couldn't play in the game. He was in full uniform, though, because that's just the way it was going to be. The red carpet leading to the green carpet. That was pretty cool, a pretty cool effect. You got to see Nicholas Backstrom, the fellow Finn. As we were the Minnesota Finlanders for quite a while there, you could say. <laughs> that was cool. You got to see Nick, Nick Schultz, who played in more games than anybody. I mean, that guy, just he was here forever. A very mediocre defenseman, a very nice guy um, who stuck around... He was very durable, but again, very mediocre. He was better earlier in his career, and in juniors, he was a 55-point type of defenseman. I figured, figured, here we go, here comes the offensive defenseman this team could use in the coming years, and he was like a 15-20 point guy at best. You know, uh, it's kind of frustrating, but it was cool to see him again. It's like it brought back all these memories, Gabrick, Schultz, Backstrom. You know, nothing against Backstrom, but that was an era of wild hockey where I thought it was kind of I don't know. I mean, they had a couple of playoff series that didn't go well, of course, unfortunately. The poor shootouts and everything. Uh, you love Backstrom for that. And he, he was there for that reason because, you know, he's the winningest goalie in franchise history. Schultz, the most games. And then Koivu, you know, like the... Basically, you could kind of say him say he's Mr. Minnesota Wild in a lot of ways. Not because he's a prolific scorer, but because he's the captain. He's the captain of Minnesota. He is. And Gabrick's the leading scorer all time, even though the, he wasn't here for a long time the longest time ever, and you know, the, the injuries, the holdouts, I talked about that about 50 times, but man, that's why they were there, it was pretty cool to see all that, and the tribute was nice, but the play on the game was garbage. The play on the ice was garbage, it was it was awful. Uh, the Wild had one shot on net late in the first period. Late in the first period, the Wild had one shot on net. The power plays were garbage. There was a power outage, we'll call it, and again, the well, at least the Wild got 17,000 fans in the arena, but having trouble selling out now, unfortunately. Things are not going as well as they were before. It's not automatic sellouts like it was in the past when a lot of people thought of Doug Risebrow as being kind of arrogant, like, yeah, we'll sell out games no matter who we have on the ice. I'll give up third-round pick, second-round pick for for mediocre, you know, fourth-line checker anytime I want. Who cares? You know, as long as the team... Uh, as long as, the, as long as the team sells tickets, that's all we care about. It was almost like that with Risebrow, I swear. Uh, but I don't know. This was one of the weaker showings. It's thanks. It, it's a it's it's nice that Kakinen was there because he made some great stops time and time again. He faced a lot of shots in the game. Anaheim just dominated the puck the whole game. It's not like they were spectacular, but the Wild were lifeless. They were listless the whole night. I mean, think about this statistic. You know when Ryan Hartman scored again. Anaheim of course scored twice in the game. On the Cam Fowler goal, again, Kakinen thought he was interfered with. Apparently not. Just not enough contact. Touched the glove, but it was before the goal. Well before, but again, well screened at the end of the day. He was, he was screened, unfortunately, so he couldn't see the play. That was the annoying part, but that's part of the game, I guess. The Raquel goal was not the best. It is what it is. Kakinen would have want that back, but he was awesome after that the entire game. Love what Kakinen brings, and if he wasn't in that, if Stalag was in that, I think this might have been five to one or something, five to two type of game. Gibson was what he was, solid. You know, that's basically all there's to say. But Ryan Hartman's goal, 
to the point with about 12 minutes remaining in the second period. Not the first, second period. The Wild, uh, Ryan Harmon, that was, that was the fourth shot on goal for the entire game for Minnesota. Fourth shot on goal the entire game. What? I mean, that's f- f- freaking awful. That's pathetic. And that's just how it was. Uh, Bruce Boudreaux very frustrated in the, <laughs> in the press conference after the game. Player after player, like, couldn't believe what they were seeing. I mean, but it's on you guys. I mean, you got dominated, and it was stupid. It was just a stupid, stupid game. It's amazing the Wild tied it up. Again, great play by Parisi with an awesome check. Four check and knocking the guy into the wall. And again, and uh, getting the recovery. And zipping it to Ryan Donato for the quick release on the left side. That was awesome. That was a great play by Parisi and Donato. Donato finishing on his shots. Parisi getting only a sixth assist of the year. Fiala getting his tenth there. But that was, so that's nice for those guys. <laughs> it's only a sixth assist. But the, the assists Parisi has made have been pretty damn good. Fiala and Donato, both beneficiaries at the end of the day of Parisi's play. And Parisi beneficiating from uh, Fiala a couple times and Koivu again. Again, with the, ro- the roster messed up and changed and everything. Donato playing center in this game. Pretty crazy stuff. It was nice to see, and he played well. Donato's been awesome. Parisi's been awesome. Fiala's been awesome. All three of those guys deserve recognition the past couple weeks here. It's been awesome. Uh, Donato, Donato most recently, Zuccarillo most recently. I'll finally get to the whole uh, I'll finally get to the whole award thing. I've been kind of dragging this a little bit. I apologize. But it's mostly, you know, the conversation going on with Carolina and, and the whole Koiva tribute. It was cool. It was very cool. Very nice to see. So I kind of went down memory lane a bit. I hope you don't mind that too much. The only thing I'm afraid of is Kakadin in the shootout. That wasn't too good. And Fiala, he couldn't even hang on to the puck. Parisi just got stopped by Gibson. I mean, that's it is what it is. I don't know. I don't know why you keep going low, Parisi. He keeps doing it. He always goes low. Where Quavu on his backhand ends up usually raising the puck and making a good play. That's why Quavu is so successful. As predictable as it is, it's, it's successful. Fiala couldn't even hang on to the puck. That was dumb. And then, God, I hate, I hate the wild on the shootout sometimes. And Kakadin beat twice. Two shots, two goals. So, ugh, let's not let's not go in the Nicholas Backstrom route here. He was one of the worst shootout goalies I've ever seen. Ever. <laughs> ever. I remember Josh Harding, you're just begging, can we put Josh Harding in for, for just for the shootout so we don't lose? Wouldn't that be nice so we can get the extra point here? <laughs> That's what we used to back, back in the day as I try not to cough to death here, but that was, again, that's where I kind of was like, oh, Nicholas Backstrom, ugh. And again, the it didn't things didn't end so well either, the contract crap, where he wouldn't, like, yeah, he, he wouldn't just end it. He wouldn't do the buyout. He just wanted to stay and suck the money. That was frustrating, but I don't know. We, I better get over it at this point. It's been a while now. He was here forever. Not a good finish. Frustrating. It's nice that we got a point out of it. Thank you, Parisi Donato. And, of course, Ryan Hartman, again, also, a good play. Victor Rask and Felino. Nice uh, nice group of guys there on the fourth line adding to their stats. That's good Good for them. And you got a point out of it. Okay, I'll shut up now. The Mike Madonna Award for this week. It's going to go to Ryan Donato. Zuccarello is going to probably just pretty much share it. He was so good this entire week. Zuccarello, what a nice week. Donato's been on fire. It's been great to see. His confidence going up. More and more opportunities. Where's Donato at now? He's still only at eight points despite the run. That's crazy. Zuccarello's at 17. He's way up near the top now. Where Zuccarello forever was at like six, seven points. Now he's at 17. So he definitely, I'm going to have him share it with uh, Donato. The James Shepard Memorial, it's going to go to, it's going to go to Dumba and Suter. I thought they were terrible. I thought they were terrible in that Carolina game at the end of the day. Dumba's been not the same guy. Again, providing zero offense. He's, he does the same kind of stuff where he bites. He bites and he's out of position and he's caught and it just keeps happening. It just keeps happening. So there's a reason Dumb is a minus 10 at the end of the day. So it's extremely frustrating. Uh, Eric Stahl had a very scary crash into the boards just like he did a couple years ago against the uh, St. Louis Blues where the Wild lost in the, the Boudreaux series, of course. Not the Mike Yo series when he was their coach. We, Mike Yo won both series with Minnesota-St. Louis. That's funny. But um, now a scary situation. We'll see what happens if it's a concussion. Probably got to be play like that. That's that's scary. So that really sucks. Sad to see that. Hopefully Stahl is able to have a speedy and full recovery, especially the full recovery part at the end of the day. So God bless him. Um, Jonas Verdeen has also been pretty damn good 
for uh, an extended period. He had a very strong week as well. And and seriously, that's been a good duo despite uh, one of the uh, despite both of them being left shot. So it's kind of a tough situation there. At the end of the day, we'll take a quick break and come back, preview four games, and look at the prospects in segment two. <laughs> Back here on Brave the Wild. Let's get right into it. we got four games to preview. Starting off with one of the better teams in hockey, and you could argue they're the top line in hockey. In fact, they are the top line in hockey right now, the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, if you had a top line for the whole NHL, it's, you know, it's <laughs> it's going to be McDavid and Drysdale are going to be on it at the very least. Those two guys are both going to be on it for sure. I don't know why this isn't responding at the end of the day. Finally, that was weird, but okay. The Edmonton Oilers, they are they have the best power play in the league. They're one of the better teams in the NHL right now, and I, you know what? Good, good, good. For all of you that hate Canadian teams, uh, or just were like, ha-ha, no Canadian teams in the playoffs this year, why is that a good thing? Why is that a good thing? Come on. I want to see Edmonton. You don't want to see Edmonton in the playoffs? Are you crazy? You don't think that's good for hockey? If you like the NHL, if you want the NHL to succeed, come on, man. I want to see Edmonton. I want to see Calgary. I do want to see Vegas. Damn right I want to see Vegas. Vancouver, eh, yeah, too much icky history with them. San Jose Sharks, I can't believe what's happening, but it, it's a sad situation. I feel for Joe Thornton, I really do. Keeps, he keeps coming back, and he's 42 years old, and uh, they're not going anywhere. It's, it's, it's over. It is over. Connor McDavid, Connor McDavid, 55 points on the year, 19 goals, along with Leon Dry. Sittle, Leon Dreisittle, spectacular. Man, these two guys are studs. They're unbelievable. Stud, yeah, they're studs. Ryan Nugent Hopkins has missed an extended period of time. He's been out, unfortunately. Second line center for the aforementioned Edmonton Oilers. 55 and 54, the leading scorers in the National Hockey League. There's a drop-off to Zach Cassian. James Neal has been way better for the Calgary for the Calgary Flames. They're the Edmonton Oilers than he was with the Calgary Flames last year. These weren't trades. They just looked like trades. Mike Smith and James Neal. <laughs> James Neal, who was so disappointing for Calgary last year. Mike Smith, who was adequate, and then he got real crappy. And then he picked it up at the very end of the year. and was He was decent in the playoffs. He was one of the main reasons the, Wild, or the Calgary Flames were even in it at the end of the day because their scoring just stopped. Their defense was awful. I mean, they lost in five games. So I'm a little annoyed with that one. I, I really wanted them to beat Colorado, and they didn't. But, uh, yeah. Arizona Coyotes. Whew. Yeah, I better get off it. Um, Edmonton Oilers, that's what it's all about. You've got Sam Gagne, again, one of those fourth-line centers who's, who's better than his role. But, you know, it's just, it is what it is. You know, he's, he's so good at it. You want to move him up, but then you move him up, and he's not as good. So it is what it is. He's missed an extended period. Marcus Granlin, the younger brother of Mikhail, not very productive right now. Though Mikhail Granlin has not been very productive either for the... Uh, uh, National Predators. I don't think he's going to be getting eight million a year anymore. Re- remember that conversation? I think that's done. I think that's done and dusted. I mean, if you're in a contract year and you're performing like that, okay, <laughs> give him five point five. Bring him back. You know, five point five million. Bring him back. Okay, I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. I would not mind having Granlin back. I keep getting sidetracked, and I apologize. Darnell Nurse. Oh boy, I'm still bitter about the goal. Last year, that was heartbreaking. Another one of those stupid matinee games where we lost. We've had success against Edmonton this year so far. We shut them down. That was pretty surprising. At the end of the day, I was kind of st- st- I was kind of stunned. That was cool. Uh, it's a it's been an entertaining matchup with this team over the years, though. It's like whenever Edmonton stinks, they beat us. It's like they shut us down and they beat us. But when they're good, we beat them. I, I wrap your head around that one. I have no idea. 3 nothing. That was really something. Alex Stalock, that was the only shutout of his season so far. 3 nothing shutout versus the Edmonton Oilers on October 22nd. It's been a while. Gosh, almost two months ago. And we play again on Feb 21. So another long, long, long wait from now. Edmonton's basically better at everything. Uh, they're just, they just get a couple more penalty minutes. Uh, even goals against, they're slightly better. That's funny. Slightly. They've given up two less goals on the year. Both teams' goaltending has been 
up and down. Of course, Minnesota's goaltending for a while there with Stalock and uh, Kakinen was spectacular. Kakinen's still been good, and Stalock has dropped off mightily. Uh, I'm looking forward. I, I want to see Kakinen back in that. I do. I, I want to see Kakinen in that against the Edmonton Oilers, but Stalock got the shutout last time, so wouldn't be surprised if he's in that. That's tonight. Oh, going to be fun. Going to be a fun, fun game. <clears throat> Most likely guy to score tonight for Minnesota. Is Dumba ever going to score? Is Dumba ever going to score? I, I'm not going to put his name on there. I say Kevin Fiala scores tonight against the Edmonton Oilers. I think the Wild are going to beat him again. I got a sneaky feeling in XL Energy Center. After that crappy POS game and how we are complaining about not having home ice game after game after game. We're so good at home. And then you have a tribute game. This is why the first segment was so long. You have a tribute game for Koivu against a team against Anaheim. Okay, they're a defensive team. They used to be more of an offensive team. They've always been a little physical. They've always been a pain in the butt to play. Always. Even when they're not good, which right now they're not as good as they used to be anyway. Um, but uh, just an effortless, crappy game. I don't care how good An- Anaheim's defense is. Come on. Come on, man. That was, that was, that was garbage. About four shots on goal midway through the bleeping game. Please. I expect a better effort tonight. A much, much better effort tonight. And again, you're going against one of the best teams in hockey, against two of the best players in hockey, blah, blah, blah. Goaltending that's not really any better than ours. They've given up two less goals than us. So I think Minnesota comes out and wins this game 4-2 to two against the Edmonton Oilers. Most likely got to score. I'm picking Kevin Fiala. I just got a feeling it's going to be a better energy. We better move right along here before I drag this out too much longer. Hopefully this responds now. Oh boy, is it Philly? Is it Philly? Is it Philly? I don't want to... I don't want to... I'm getting horrible memories from last year. Oh my God. This was one of the most horrifying matchups last season. When Philadelphia was awful, Wild took a nice, big, juicy 3-1, to 4-1 to one lead, and we still freaking lose against... I, I don't know. It wasn't against Carter Hart, put it that way. Carter Hart has emerged. Carter Hart has emerged. Good for the Philadelphia Flyers. The Philadelphia Flyers. They've emerged nicely, 17-9, and nine, yet they're still fourth place in the Metropolitan Division, but they're definitely in playoff contention, very much so. Again, this will be on Saturday, coming up. Looking forward to that on the 14th <clears throat> at 6 p.m. in Exo Energy Center. So another 6 p.m. game, slightly earlier. Home game for Minnesota, a golden opportunity and all that, but this matchup, I'm just, I'm not comfortable with it. Philadelphia, they've won three out of their last five, and of course the Wild have lost a couple in a row after winning five in a row. A couple of crappy games. Again, you just got absolutely destroyed by Carolina, and then you put up nothing against Anaheim until like halfway through the bleeping game, then you you, know, you had a chance, but you didn't finish. Brian Elliott has moved on to be a backup goalie after being a starter for a couple of years, year and a half or so for the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. Still very solid. Very solid. I would not mind having Brian Elliott as a backup goalie to uh, Kakpo Kakinen. Or, of course, you platoon him with Alex Stalock, because when Stalock's good, he's good, and everybody loves him and stuff and stuff. Uh, Carter Hart, the goalie of the future. Chuck Fletcher came into an uh, organization that was... Well, it was like currently they were in the shambles, but they had a really nice farm system, and Carter Hart was part of it. And, of course, a goalie drafting a goalie, blah, 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 blah. You hope you hope it's a, it's a good one, and Carter Hart is definitely... Got a nice future in the league. Still super duper young. 2.43 goals against average. One shutout on the season. I don't think the Wild win this game. I don't think so. Philadelphia's been a pain in the butt for Minnesota for a long time. I don't, I don't think they win. Uh, Sean Cortier, Travis Karnacki, uh, Claude Giroux. I'm surprised Claude Giroux's not leading the club in scoring. He's had kind of a down year. And it's not like he's missed time. He's played in every game. Down to 22 points. Weird. Jacob Voracek, Ivan Provenov, the young uh, defenseman. 19 points. He's really emerged. He was a rookie last year. The numbers were kind of, uh, you know, but he was just a rookie. And now he's picking it up. Uh, former Gopher, Tyler Pitlick, son of Lance Pitlick. Lance Pitlick, again, another former Gopher back in the 80s. Love the Pitlicks. Love the Pitlicks. I'm actually Facebook friends with Lance Pitlick, if you can believe that. But no, it's not. Uh, <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be lucky to ever get him to interact with me. But. You know, you gotta, you just, you know, it's at least I'm Facebook friends with Lance Pitlick, though, so, uh, right? Take that, right? <laughs> Philadelphia's, a, they're an improving team. They're improving very quickly. And do you want to give credit to Chuck Fletcher? No, no, I'm going to give the credit to Ron Hextall. I am. Um, that's where it's like a lot of us kind of judged Ron Hextall, like, yeah, he's not good. He's not good. He left the team in shambles. No, he didn't. It was just a patience thing. Sometimes it's good to stink for a couple of years. Get some good draft picks. 
You know, maybe you get a goalie of the future. Hopefully the Wild already have that because it doesn't look like Robson right now. And that's too bad, but maybe he could be a good backup in the future. The two Iowa goalies end up being the Wild and the Minnesota goalies not too long from now. Uh, but uh, boy, has he had a bad run. We'll get to that very shortly. Philadelphia is a well-rounded team. they got good defensemen, young. I mean, there's a lot of talented young players. Uh, still some veterans like Claude Giroux, who's not that old. Portier, who's been very solid. Uh, Konecki as well. <clears throat> It's a good, solid, all-around team with a, with a bright future, and they're already in the playoff mix. And eight games above 500, not bad, eh? 15th in goals, right in the middle. Sixth in goals against, again, Carter Hart. Hey, Carter Hart has been awesome. And Brian Elliott's been good, too. Because you don't have a... It's not like you have a good starter and a crappy backup. You have a good starter and a good backup. That's nice. Power plays 19th. That's not much to brag about. Penalty kill's been awesome. And they're good at not getting a ton of penalty minutes. They've been disciplined. It's a disciplined team. I can imagine from a disciplined general manager and Ron Hextall previously, Chuck Fletcher kind of taking over and watch him get all the credit now. God bless him. God bless Chuck Fletcher. He was never a bad general manager, but it was kind of like those commercials where just okay is not enough. You know, he was he was above average, I'll say, Chuck Fletcher. And again, he was a he was a well above average person from what I hear. Uh, very very good with the media. There's always going to be an argument here and there, especially the way Michael Russo of the Athletic is. A tough son of a gun. He likes to pursue every little nick, nook, and cranny, but he's a freaking awesome job. I mean, who who doesn't like Michael Russo? Seriously. Just Paul Fenton, I guess. Because <laughs> Paul, yeah, we, Paul Fenton. We'll leave that alone for now. I think Paul Fenton drafted well, though. As we keep going back to the uh, prospects, I think he drafted well. <laughs> I think he did. That's where, again, uh, that's the Ron Hextall side of Paul Fenton, possibly, that might end up, <laughs> ended up being a good thing for that short little run. At least a couple of good draft picks. Mm, interesting. Ah, I'm just seeing some weird thing about the NFL popping up. I'll leave that alone for now. This is not a football show. Uh, I don't want to play the Blackhawks again. Minnesota will play Philadelphia again on March 14th. Long way off from now. And again, this thing's not responding. There we go. Now it does. Chicago Blackhawks back-to-back -back situation. So you will see Kotkin in one of these games. Will you see him against Philly? Will you see him against Chicago? Put him against Chicago. Put him against Chicago. I want to see the Wild beat this bleeping team. I just just beat the Blackhawks. I don't care if the Wild win. If the Wild win four games, five games all season, I hope it's against the bleeping Blackhawks. I'm sick of them. Uh, Crawford is finally healthy. He's been hurt forever. This is the first Wild Blackhawks game of the season. It's been a long wait. We play again on the 4th of February, and then March 17th. To <laughs> March 17th. Happy birthday, Paul Tuna vs. Canada. Uh, no, that's not his birthday. I'm just screwing around. It's a, couple of, it's a week after that, actually. March 19th, just a couple of days later. So you're going to cram them all in that time. That's kind of silly. And that's a home and away situation. I don't know. Should have started a little earlier, but I, I guess maybe maybe it's fine. Kind of like the college hockey season where things really pick up after Christmas. That's when it gets real interesting. Real interesting, real fast. Oh, boy. Yeah, I remember last year, the Wild had some crappy games against this team. Right when you thought maybe we're starting to get back in the mix again and the Black Eyes are just, just torch us. It was so stupid. Uh, obviously, they still have a lot of players from the Stanley Cup days. Now they have Robin Lehner kind of platooning with Corey Crawford, who's not at a good season. So Crawford will look like Ken Dryden, Grant Fuhrer, Patrick Waugh, and uh, Dominic Hasek all in one against the Wild. Uh, Robin Lehner, it's amazing. This is a... He's... He's been good, really, at the end of the day. His goals against average, 2.71, doesn't look so great, but his save percentage is about 93. That's awesome, and no shutouts. So that's a pretty interesting couple of stats there when you put that together. Crawford and Leonard have been sharing time, of course. Again, Crawford's been recovering in and out. He's not the same guy. Uh, he struggled, but again, I'm sure he'll be in that, and I'm sure he'll be the best goalie in the world against us, like he always is. Patrick Kane is at over a point a game. He might be pushing the 90s to 100 range again this season. He's not as spectacular as he could be. Jonathan Taves has certainly dropped off a bit. Down to 18, only only 18 points, and he's played in every game. Only six goals on the year. Debrin Cat, who has emerged nicely the last year and a half. He's second on the team in scoring, but 14 points behind Patrick Kane. But again, good for them. They're both healthy. Brandon Saad, again, that was a... I don't know. I don't know. They got a lot of players for Brandon Saad at Chicago at the time, but and then they get him back, and it's like, he hasn't been anything special. He never became the player a lot of people thought he would be. Brandon Saad 
It's been just sad. That's all. Sorry. Duncan Keith, he's dropped off the map. Remember last year he had that athletic goal late in the season in a meaningless game for him, but good for uh, the Blackhawks anyway in the overtime period. Did a Matt Dumba. Just went crazy down the ice and scored. That was a big-time play. But uh, Duncan Keith, obviously he's been aging for years, and he's, boy, he's way down to six points. What a valuable stud he was for so long. Same with Brent Seabrook. Oof, man. They, both of these guys have missed a little bit of time. Brent Seabrook, remember how good he was? Four points. So not seeing a whole lot of offense from either one of those guys. The Blackhawks are riding the pine. But only three points behind Minnesota for the bottom. The bottom of the Central Division. Uh, I don't like this matchup. I never have. Again, we haven't played yet this year. Vegas recently just stomped them into the ground. And go Vegas, Golden Knights. After they've been struggling pretty mightily with uh, Flurry missing a ton of time with his father's death. He had some injuries, then he had his father's uh, his father die. That was sad. We'll talk about them very shortly, actually. Um, they beat the crap out of the Blackhawks. Blackhawks 2-3 and three in their last five. They beat Boston. The Blackhawks beat Boston. Wow. Rematch of 2013 final there. Uh, lose to Arizona. Gets shut out by the St. Louis Stanley Cup champion Blues. And beat New Jersey, one of the weaker teams, 2-1. to one. Go Wild. They're going to win this game. The Wild are going to beat the Blackhawks, I believe. I think the Wild beat the Chicago Blackhawks, believe it or not. I know. It's like, of course they should beat them. We, sh we should beat them. We're a little better. But are we? This matchup has always been a pain in the butt. But I'll pick the Wild over the Chicago Blackhawks in this one. I have a feeling Kakinen's going to be a net. And I think that's going to be a good thing. I think Stalock will be a net versus the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. That's probably... I mean, it is what it is. If, you, if Kakinen beats the Flyers, good for him. What an awesome... Uh, feeling that'll be at the end of the day. I'll feel damn good about that one, and uh, boy, I, I hope that ends up being the case. I, I truly do wish this thing would do what I want it to do. <laughs> it's been a tough go today. Uh, there we go. The Vegas Golden Knights coming up Tuesday the 17th. The Minnesota Wild will finally play the Vegas Golden Knights. Will Fleury be a net? Will it be Malcolm Supan? Who's it going to be? Malcolm Supan has had some good moments. He's been frustrating as well. He's had some awful games. Minnesota's history against the Vegas Golden Knights has been fantastic. We've been just about undefeated. We did lose once last year to them, finally, after sweeping them in uh, the inaugural season when they won the Western Conference Championship. That was pretty impressive. Vegas Golden Knights. Okay, most likely you got to score against Philadelphia. I'm losing it. Uh, I think Dumba's going to score against Philadelphia. i got a sneaky feeling there. And against Chicago, it's going to be Parisi. The Wild beat Chicago. Something along the likes of... Uh, I think I think it's going to be a higher scoring game, like five to four, five to three. Minnesota beats the Blackhawks. The Philadelphia Flyers, I think, beat the Wild three to one, something like that. But then uh, Dumba will finally get his fourth goal. I keep picking Dumba to score against somebody. Just score, you son of a gun, score. That would be great. Vegas has been kind of mediocre so far. Uh, good start at the very beginning, and they've been mediocre ever since. Lots of nice players. Nice to see uh, William Carlson kind of picking it up again. Riley Smith has been so valuable. Mark Stone got that giant contract. Jonathan Marcia Schultz. I mean, it's one player after another. Stan's knee, the Wiley veteran who's had some good moments. Nate Schmidt, the former gopher. Alex Tuck has missed a ton of time this year, unfortunately for him. So we'll see what happens there. Just recovering now. 10 points in only 16 games. Max Pacioretty, the former Montreal Canadian, with uh, 27 points to lead the way. Just barely over Carlson. Kind of a consistent group of guys there. But the team in general had been struggling. Now they're three and two in their last five. Couple losses to both New York teams after beating the Rangers on the twelfth, or excuse me, the second of December, four to one. Nice performance there, but then losing five nothing. Oh boy, on the eighth, that's rough. And crushing the Chicago Blackhawks most recently. Good for them there. Thank you. Go ahead and beat the crap out of the Blackhawks. My only fear again is the Blackhawks getting yet another uh, elite prospect like they did last year. That was frustrating. The history with this team is good. It really is. But I got a feeling this is going to be Vegas' game. I, I, I got a feeling. Um, it's in Golden. It's in, it's in Vegas. December the 17th to wrap up this week's uh, previews. Then on Feb 11, Minnesota hosts the Vegas Golden Knights. And March 12th, Vegas hosts the, uh, or excuse me, Minnesota hosts the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, so this is the only trip you got for those of you traveling wild fans to go to Vegas. And obviously the players like Jason Zelker, who's actually from there. But anybody that wants to go to Vegas... For, to see the Wild, that's the one and only chance is next Tuesday. So make the most of it there, I suppose. Again, Vegas 3-2 and two most recently. The Wild 3-2 and two most recently, luckily, in their last five. But 
The last two have been awful. I I think Vegas wins this game. I think Vegas wins this game. I think Flurry's going to shut the Wild down significantly. If Flurry's finally ready to go. I mean, he's been back with the team, but he's been the backup of late. Just kind of still coping with the loss of his father. It, it It is what it is, you know? I mean, it is what it is. Suter, guys like Suter and uh, Parisi recently, uh, among others, have had fathers pass away. It's, 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 luckily I've not been there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But life is life, you know? Life is life. Not everybody's so fortunate. So, I, I'm, you know, I, it's a sad thing. Uh, I, I just think Flurry beats the Wild. I got a crappy feeling. I think the uh, it's going to be a lower scoring game, three to two, something like that. Three to two, maybe maybe Vegas gets an empty netter or it's a shootout situation. The Wild squeeze a point out of it. I actually wouldn't be surprised if it comes to that. I'm going to pick the Golden Knights in overtime or a shootout, something like that. I think Vegas is picking it up lately. The Wild have had their good games, their bad games, and Flurry I think is going to have a, a good game. I think he's going to have one of his big big nights, big showings. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a consistent, solid team that kind of does a little bit of everything well. Offense, defense, whatever. Uh, they don't stand out majorly in a ton of things. Their power, their special teams are really good. Power play eighth, penalty kill ninth. And I think that could be the difference in this game. 3-2 to two win for Vegas. Most likely got to score Jason Zucker. Jason Zucker will score in Vegas at long last. That'll feel good for him, I'm sure. At the end of the day, wild to go 2-2 two and two or something like that. At the end of the day, or two one and two, two one and one, something like that. This upcoming week, get about four or five points out of these possible eight. That's my belief. At the end of the day, I don't think the Wild are going to continue to struggle and go in a major losing streak. But if they do, it is what it is. With that said, let's take a look at Le Prospects. And as per usual, we will look at the Iwegian Wild, who have not been good. Uh, Belpedio still stuck at eight points. Biden stuck at seven. Guys aren't scoring, and the goaltending has not been good. Uh, Matt Robson has dropped off. He picked it up recently. Not a bad game. Still losing, though, 4-7. and seven. So They've not been winning. Uh, Derek Mirabeau has been bad. Well, not bad, but he's not been good. Uh, almost 87, just 87% in the save percentage. Robson, I can't believe it, as good as he was. He had a couple of rotten games. It's his confidence has dropped off. It's been frustrating. I'll talk about a couple other roster moves of late as well. Brennan Manel was picked up. Called up. I was just, just talking about all the other stuff with that Anaheim game. I didn't even get to Brendan Manel's debut, which is really sad. As much as I love him and appreciate what he's done in Iowa, and I think he's going to be a successful NHL player. He's modeled his game after Jared Spurgeon, who he admires very much. Woodbury native. He looked very good. Got the block shot most recently. For Minnesota, got the block shot in his recent game against the uh, Anaheim Ducks, his first game in the NHL. Did not register a point, but looks confident. Not afraid to shoot the puck and uh, do some good things out there. But at the end of the day, you know, I mean, it's a nice opportunity for him. Hopefully he can stick around for a little while because we're, we're going to need him if uh, Spurgeon's going to be out. You're playing with uh, Brad Hunt. That's kind of cool. You get Brad Hunt back on his proper side, the left side, and Brandon Manel on his right side. So you don't have to have uh, <laughs> you don't have to have <laughs> Brad Hunt playing on his offside, even though he was successful at the beginning of the year. He's certainly dropped off, though, ever since. He's completely vanished, quite frankly, and that's kind of sad offensively. But it's not like he's been bad, but it's been nothing special. Manel, only 10 minutes, but was solid in the game. He was a plus two, if you can believe it. He was on the ice for both of those goals. Uh, not afraid to shoot the puck, but nothing officially got on net. Brodine, again, has been spectacular. Him and Susie have been the two best defensemen for Minnesota, even though you got two left guys playing <laughs> playing on the same pairing, which is kind of goofy, but it is what it is. You know, It is... What it is. Uh, Iowa, though, that's where I was talking about Brennan Manel. That's what got me moving around, sidetrack. Obviously, major success in Iowa. 17 assists to go along with his two goals. Again, a power play threat for Minnesota, or Iowa, pardon me. He's one of the few plus guys on Iowa who they have dropped out the face of the earth of late. It's sad. Uh, Gerald Mayhew also called up most recently with the Eric Stahl injury. So we'll see what happens there. Gerald Mayhew, hopefully he can play. I'm guessing he'll have some action in the upcoming week. That'll be great. Of course, Sam Honest will lead the club in scoring now individually for a while, I'm sure, with no Mayhew in the lineup. Both Man uh, Manel and Mayhew, it is what it is with the injuries. It's just going to keep dropping off for Iowa. I think some of these valuable players for Iowa are going to be missing. Brandon DeHaim is at seven points. There's just not been a lot of progress with the prospects. Uh, Dimitri Sokolov finally getting some ice time. That's good. Finally getting in a couple games here. He scored his second goal of the season in only seven games. Now two games this past week. 
got a second goal finally. But generally speaking, not a whole lot of positivity in Iowa of late. The major prospects like uh, Belpio, I wouldn't even call him major, but he, he is a prospect. Uh, Nico Sturm is banged up. He got called up, never got to suit up for the Wild. He's got a bad back. That's frustrating. It's mostly been the veterans that have been leading the way. Mayhew is like a young veteran, but a veteran. A nice young veteran, but a veteran. And it's been uh, extremely frustrating. The goaltending has been awful, to be quite frank. Uh, Robson and Brabo have been bad, to be quite frank. Uh, but the play in front of them has been bad, too. Uh, Greg Pattern was recently called up after getting one little, uh, you know, <laughs> after getting one conditioning stint in Iowa. And he has not been on the ice since, which is fine. I'm not a fan of Greg Pattern. I'd rather see Brandon Mendel out there getting a crack during this time. I'm not a fan of of Greg Pattern. I'm not. Just no disrespect. Not a fan of him as a player. Sounds like a great guy as he was in Dallas. Uh, they loved him very much. The, the young boy that followed him everywhere. Uh, God bless him. But Iowa's not been pretty lately. It's been a frustration. Uh, let's get to the prospects. Looking at the college and such. The other prospects. Nick Sweeney, of course. Seventh round pick in 2017. Had a huge week last week. Four points for the Duluth Bulldogs. What an awesome couple games there. Couple goals. Couple assists. Awesome. Now he's at 12 points on 13 total games. He's a he's a minus one, but after a kind of a slow start to the season, he's picked things up. I could expect him having a career high in points this year, maybe getting into the 30s after 22 and 25 respectively in his freshman and sophomore national championship seasons for Minnesota Duluth. I'm happy what I saw of Nick Sweeney last week. That was cool. Uh, other players frustrating Bryce Misley. I don't know if he's ever going to get another point again. The poor guy. It's they, it's just a, it's a team. They finally had a good game, and Misley didn't factor in the scoring, and it's it's frustrating. Everybody on that team is in single digits in points. Oh, they just don't score at all. That's again, the uh, Vermont there. Vermont. God, I feel bad for that team. University of Vermont. Oh, sad. And right now, I get the feeling like the Gophers are not a whole lot better than the University of Vermont, and I can't believe I'm saying that, but that's college hockey right now. You see teams, again, like I talked about the last couple of weeks, like Lake Superior State have that major success in the late 80s, early 90s, and then just drop off the map after that, and you never hear about them again. You know, Lake Superior State Lakers. Like, who the hell are they? I don't know. They're just this team that plays in Lake Superior State. That's what people think now. I remember them as multinational champs, and it's funny how their coach, uh, head coach of Notre Dame, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, who got to the title game just a couple of years ago against Nick Sweeney when he was a freshman, and he was clutch. He was clutch. He was clutch in that game. Some big plays during that playoff run. Good for him. Kovanov is just unbelievable. Kovanov is a future top center for Minnesota, I think. It's a wild need center so bad, and he has just been, oh my God, he's been lights out, like 10 points in just a couple games here. I mean, the guy is just unbelievable. He might get 100 points this year. In fact, I'd be shocked if he didn't. Stay healthy, Kovanov. Stay healthy and keep it up. He has been crazy. He's a plus 27 for the Montecon. Wildcats. 53 points in 26 games. That is off the charts. It's off the charts. He is spectacular. Uh, over two points a game now is uh, Alexander Kovanov after this crazy run. He's still only 19 years of age. Oh my god. <laughs> the Wild got a blessing there. Thank you, Paul Fenton and co. Thank you, Paul Fenton and co. with that one. Now, Connor DeWare, still quiet in Iowa. You know, he's at his moments, but generally speaking, nothing to brag about. Nothing to write home about, so to speak. Jack McBain, all right. After struggling for a little while, multi-points last week. He's at nine now. He's at nine points. He's a plus four. He's improved, and Boston College is definitely a better team than they were last year. Good for Jack McBain getting a couple points this past weekend. Unfortunately, College Hockey is going to shut down, so I won't have a whole lot to say. Up and coming, first off, added his 10th point, his fifth goal of the season. Good for Vladislav first off for the University of Connecticut, another Russian, but in college hockey, North America. So we don't have to worry about all that contract stuff, thankfully. Uh, good positive meeting, apparently, with uh, Bill Guerin, general manager of the Wild, of course. I know. Bill Guerin and uh, Kirill Kaprizov, that's been the good news. All indications are he is absolutely coming to the United States, and there's only one team he would play for, the Minnesota Wild. So that's freaking awesome, because obviously we have his right. So if he comes, he comes with us. That's going to be great. All indications point to Kirill Kaprizov signing with the Minnesota Wild as soon as April, which would be freaking awesome. Could be a big game changer for Minnesota for many years. We hope Sam Hentz has already reaches his freshman point total. He is now at 20 in only 14 games versus 20 in 37 games last year. Too bad St. Cloud's not been good, but at least he's out of the minuses now. He's a plus one is the aforementioned Sam Hentz. 14, uh, he was a plus 14 last year for the number one team in the nation. 
Uh, Jim Cloud State fighting to get back into the rankings again. And boy, tell me about it with the Minnesota Gophers as a Gopher fan. What are the rankings? I mean, what are rankings? I don't know. I, I don't know what rankings are. <laughs> we don't know what that is around here anymore, do we? <laughs> We're like Vermont now and, and uh, Northern Michigan and stuff. Like, we don't even know what rankings are. All those teams that were so good back in the day that have vanished off the face of the earth. Michigan State is another one. Oh, God, it's, it's depressing. I, I'm a dedicated Gopher hockey fan, and it's been depressing. But they won't be playing for a while. They didn't have a bad week against Ohio State. They did not, but mm, split a couple of super close games against Ohio State. Ugh, but it's been rough. Marshall Warren, anybody care about him? I do. Five points on the season for Boston College. Again, a high-scoring defenseman for the U.S. National Under-18 team rolling up there in the U.S. Hockey League and the uh, uh, USHL. Definitely got some Definitely got some offensive potential. Looking forward to what he could bring in the coming years. Hunter Jones, remember he had that awesome game not too long ago. Still been solid for the Peters, Petersboro Peets in the Ontario Hockey League. 2.53 goals against average. 19-3 and three on the season. He has just been a flat-out winner in the Ontario Hockey League, and his team has been very good as well, those Petersboro Peets, the Peets for the love of Pete. I know it's not funny, but I had to say it anyway. I had to say it. One final guy to look at because he's been having an awesome year. <clears throat> In the Ontario Hockey League as well, that would be Ivan Ladnia, former or future right wing, not former, future right wing for Minnesota. I would hope. I would hope he's at about two points a game almost now in Ontario. That's been awesome. Uh, 19, po- 19 games, fifteen goals for Ivan Ladnia. Pretty much mixing things up perfectly now. Before he was getting more assists than uh, like way more assists than goals. Now it's just about even. 15 points, or 15 goals, uh, 16 assists. He has been almost doubling in the scoring. He's been absolutely great, plus 9 on the season. He was a plus 22 last year, but at just over a point a game. Now he's closer to two points a game. Ivan Lani again, hope and pray this guy is ready to go, at least with Iowa next year. As you remember last year when he joined Iowa for a short time, nothing happened. That was unfortunate. Six games, he was a plus two and nothing else. Uh, was with Iowa for a short time, a couple seconds. He was basically like, he's on Iowa, but he didn't play. And then it's like, nope, go back to the OHL, kick some ass there and come back and get ready for pro hockey as a 21-year-old. Uh, and uh, as he doesn't turn 21 until the end of August, so that's going to be cool. Stay away from the sauce if you can with that 21 thing. A little bit, don't go too far and uh, have a successful career. Don't go. do not do what Bruce Boudreaux did, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what he would tell him. I'm sure at the end of the day. I'm sure he would, actually. Uh, it's been a nice, solid week, though. The uh, the geek line, as they call them, Jules Eriksenek, Jordan Greenway, and Luke Cunningham. They've, they've continued to play solid. I'm just bringing them up again. I like that geek line. They've been good. Jules Eriksenek did add a goal this past week. Generally speaking, again, great feed from Greenway. <sighs> yeah, they've had a positive couple games. That's been a good line. Hopefully they don't get broken up too much. But, of course, again, they're split up right now because of, you know, obviously injury after injury. Now Eric Stahl is hurt, too. So it's going to be interesting heading into these next few games. It could be really bad. We'll see what happens as long as Eric Stahl doesn't have a super serious injury or if Koivu can come back. That'd be a boost. Maybe you have a shot here. Otherwise, this could be and this could end up being a rotten week because of that. So we'll have to wait and see how things progress. I'm not ready to... Just say the Wilder are going to go 0-4 this week. Hoping and praying one of the two centers comes back and we'll be okay. Otherwise, again, next man up and hope things uh, hope things, hope things, things work out at the end of the day. It's crazy to think Nico Sturm's hurt too because we can sure use his help right now and we're not going to get it against Edmonton tonight. With that said, we'll get to the contact details. A couple of quick shout-outs. Quick shout-out to MN. W Prospects, MNW Prospects, of course. I'm an admin on that page. Want to thank Pavel Bonnet, Justin Back, Merrick Skyba, and others along the way that have been a part of that page. We keep up with everything with the prospects all the way up to Zach Carizzi, Ryan Suter with Minnesota. Everything, prospects all the way up, all the way from Bryce Misley to Eric Stahl with Minnesota. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Love the page to keep up with everything. Like I've said 16 times, I apologize. Join it, MNW Prospects. Uh, it's facebook.com forward slash MNW Prospects. Give that a like. Join the page. Follow whatever you want to do. Conversate. Talk about the prospects and about the Minnesota Wild. Big shout out to Minnesota Wild Global as well. Scott Cavendish got that thing going. Big, big shout out to him. Again, Chance Costick and David Costick, of course. 
Love you guys very much. And man, so many Chad Walski help. I haven't given him a shout out for a while. Great guy. Great guy. Was a part of, again, Minnesota Wild Hardcore. All of us joining Minnesota Wild Global now because Minnesota Wild Hardcore has shut down. That is what it is, you know. <clears throat> but a great page. In game threads. We can curse at uh, bad goals on occasion, but uh, curse at the refs, whatever it is. Okay, maybe we don't want to curse too much. It is, <laughs> but you know, long as uh, long as it doesn't get too crazy, not just blindly cutting down the team. I know they don't like that too much. So I mean, I don't. I'm not blindly cutting down the team when I criticize things. I try to analyze and be fair. This and that. So it is what it is. Great page, great page. Encourage you to join that one, and of course, Minnesota Wild prospects as well. And the Brave the Wild page. Darn it! Don't forget to join that one. Dang it! Don't forget about little old me too. Facebook.com forward slash Brave the Wild dot Minnesota because of. Brave the Wild was already taken, and it doesn't really... I, I don't know if anything's really going on with that one. We'll leave that alone, but I'll put links in the show description. want to encourage you to join the show via audio submission. Why not? Come on and let your voice be heard. Let your voice be heard. would be great. Use the uh, free voice recording application on any smart device on the planet. Simply turn it on or, you know, tap on it, whatever. Click record and talk. Treat it like a phone call. Hit stop, save it, and email it to paladinolive at yahoo.com, paladinolive at yahoo.com. I will then convert it over into an mp3 file, thanks to Zamzar or Converto.com. Going to give them a free plug because they give me a free service with a smaller file size. Can convert it into an mp3 so I can put it here in the editing software, in this case Audacity, and your voice will be heard. Keep it to around five minutes or less, something like that. And if it's a Stanley Cup championship, you can go on for a lot longer, but... I don't know. I don't know about Stanley Cup at this moment, but is that ripping on the team, or is that just, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know about a Stanley Cup right now. Yeah, we're not St. Louis right now. We're not Colorado, but we'll see what happens. Ugh, but I, I, I wish we were. Maybe we will be. Maybe Kovanov is going to be a legend. Maybe uh, Kapokakinen is going to be Jordan Binnington, <laughs> but even better. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, wouldn't that be cool? You, you never know. You never know. Maybe these guys are going to be great players. It could happen. It could happen. It sure could. So that's where the optimism comes in is some of these prospects. Lodnia is looking good. You know, DeWare, nothing super great yet, but there's a possibility. Yeah, I've talked about them a lot, and I want to keep talking about them, but I better call it a day. Do take care, everybody. Hope Minnesota can hold our own against these uh, pretty good teams coming up. Every one of them is pretty good. So uh, every one of them. Yeah, it's going to be a tough week. Uh, Chicago's not good, but they're a tough matchup forever. They always have been, always will be pretty much, and at least until Patrick Kane and Crawford and, uh, and uh, oh, I don't even want to say their names anymore. Jonathan Taves are, are no longer on that team. I still fear them like you wouldn't believe. I want the Wild to play at the top of their game and beat that team. But uh, if we can hold our own without some centers here, unless someone's coming back, surprisingly, Oh boy, hopefully. With that said, take care everybody. Talk to you in a week. Go wild.